Hello. As if by magic, we're back in the <laughs> ring. And Carl's with us too. Carl's with us again. Yay, we got Carl back. Evening, lads. It's good to be back. Evening, my friend. How are we getting on? You all good? Not too bad, not too bad. Yeah, just settling in back now after the the Christmas and New Year extravaganzas, you know. Extravaganzas. Those whiskey <laughs> shells behind you are packing. They're getting heavier. They're getting heavier bigger. Yeah, like, yeah. I, have start, I have to start drinking more. Uh, oh. <laughs> I have a problem yeah. with collecting, not drinking. But, uh, <laughs> I, got, yeah. I, I did get uh, quite a nice one, actually. The um, Kentucky Oak, the blue one. Yeah. Red Breast Kentucky Oak. And um, I I've got been actually... Stuff of- I've been buying stuff over here and getting it shipped to my dad, who's getting a bit fed up with the whole thing. He's like, how much fucking whiskey do you buy? He, he don't get it shipped to me in case it doesn't turn up. Oh, <laughs> oh, absolutely. He knows you too well at this stage. Oh, well, I just was here drunk on me. <laughs> so he would. But it's good to have you back. Um, I'll be, this time next month, I'll be back. I'll be back in Ireland this time next month. So uh, we'll, we'll all be in the same time zone. I'll probably still be jet lagged right enough to. Mm. You never know. You, you never you'll know. be missing I, the the black bottles of Guinness. Aye, I, I, I would say is, you know what I will miss. I got this during the, at the start of the week. This is a a, a oh, single stuff, cask, yeah. a single cask maker's mark, mm. um, from a, a one of a place north of here. Yeah. And for this, this oh, lovely, and it is absolutely delicious. I mean, really, really, really nice. Really nice. Got that one myself. Got, the Maker's oh, Mark. Yeah. Uh, well, this is fifty-five percent. Honestly, I've been drinking oh, this all week. It's unreal. I, I, it's fabulous stuff. Um, so I, I've, down to this, I had to stop. No, not just me. Julie has been drinking this as well. Um, so yeah, I, I, beautiful. So easy to drink. So easy to drink. A really, really nice bourbon. Really nice bourbon. So it is. Um, so yeah, that that's been what we've been sipping away at all week. Mm-hmm. You have a nice and, little uh, selection of bourbon there beside you. Buffalo well, I've got some interesting stuff because this is a single, single cast Buffalo Trace. Um, Lovely. Which is yeah, it, it's it, I've tried it. It's nice enough. Yep, yeah, that's good. And then this is a dent racing one card. This is from whiskey. Peru. Peru. <laughs> Yes. Now they made whiskey in Peru. Well, <laughs> Paddy Timber brought it with them. Paddy Timber <laughs> brought it. <laughs> it's made from Andean black corn, so oh, okay. it's it's okay. It's okay. Um, yeah. And then I bought this yesterday. This is a single barrel made made in New Mexico um, from New Mexico blue corn whiskey. So oh, lovely. Don't give that. I haven't opened it yet. I'll give that a wee word. Might actually yeah. open it now, actually. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we've been picking up lots of bits and pieces here and there, um, mm-hmm. including a couple of... Uh, I, I mentioned the car, and I got a couple of real bargains. Because um, people here, they buy in Irish whiskies, and they're not really sure what they are. So I've mm-hmm. picked up a couple of bottles that will be winging their way to the auction site when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> that, that basically pays for my trip. <laughs> so, yeah. Absolutely, I mean, they're nice enough to drink, but I wouldn't be wouldn't be overly enamoured of doing them. So I'll just open this. Lovely stuff, yeah. And I actually, funnily enough, I was in London um, over the summer, and while I was in London, I went to the whiskey exchange. Um, you know, I had, I had to see it. You know, I'd, I'd never been. So while I was there, I picked up a Clinish fourteen. And um, then I was talking to the guy that was, you know, there, and I was like, just like something, something different, you know. My, my dad is very, very much a man of getting something ridiculous, like just, just, you know, whatever he can get his hands on, and then like put it on unsuspecting um, victims. Um, so he was like, okay, well, you know, we don't have anything that crazy, but um, what we do have is is a Mexican whiskey. Um, I can't remember Aposolo. the name of the whiskey. I'll have to. El- Aposolo. Aposolo, that's the one, yeah. So got that, brought it back, and uh, I have to say it's actually lovely. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> they, they I thought it was whiskey. okay. I yeah. thought I thought it was it was interesting enough, and I like. Yeah. I mean, all these new countries having a word and using different grains and stuff. Excellent. Yeah, um, don't hit some that you can't please everybody, you know. But uh, absolutely. It, 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 Good enough. Uh, it's not expensive, which is a key point these days. <laughs> a yeah, key point. Big time. It's not, big time. 
Yeah, big time. Well, we do the news and then we'll get a proper chat with our card. We will, Carl. We'll catch you later. We'll head you in the wings and we'll say hello to a few people uh, as we go here. Okay, here we go. Uh, Julie here Mason, say hello. Hello. Yeah, oh, let, let, let me let me run through because there's lo there's loads of people who are in double figures already. You see, uh, uh, Linda Cox is saying she's trying the quiet man tonight. Not bad for the money, fifty two Canadian dollars, but legendary sick be far better uh, for the same price. Uh, I, so I would agree saying, with you. I think I think that's fair enough. A statement for Frank Hearn is mm -hmm. on the dark silky. Uh, Jordy Burke is saying hello uh, as well. Uh, he's uh, in Prince Edward Island. Uh, bye bye. A dark and stormy night. Remember, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified. It doesn't cost that. And Whiskey Novice is saying hello. Uh, yes, our jam. Yeah, and Big Anthony saying hello as well. Uh, hi all. Yeah, we must get down to see you sometime in February. Uh, uh, got a couple of bottles uh, that I'll be wanging down to you when we get back home, <laughs> big man. Uh, Sean McLaren is saying hello. Uh, Patrick Mulkey is saying hello. Uh, SQ is saying hello. Good evening to you. Uh, Thomas Jones is saying hello. Uh, Tony Sillett as well. And lots good of thing. thumbs up as well from people Excellent. that good don't, don't like to stick their head above the parapet in case I say something about them. No, would I do, would I do really. that? Yes, you would. <laughs> <All right. laughs> because we still can't even get a wee jingle going because uh, Facebook... Facebook probably want money out of us, but uh, for something that they don't, we don't need to be paying for. But so we're all going to do the news now. This week, there's a new distillery being announced for North Dublin. Now the plan of permission has been passed. Uh, this is this is going to be a big one. This is going to be a uh, hundred million euros worth. And if you look at the the, the uh, architect plans for it here. The, the artist plans for it. This is Bring a this up, big please. site. Yeah. Wow. Now, this is going to be a, by the look of it. A, a, you know, you, you, they haven't. There's not a lot of detail about what it's going to be, but uh, in terms of production, it looks as if it's going to be a major one. Uh, they're going to employ about they say 150 people. Going to, it says they're going to attract 50,000 tourists a year. This is North Dublin. Um, I would say that is this an industrial a... site off the M50? Yeah, it's uh, what's the name of the place? Uh, Stevenstown, just off the M50. I, it's just off the motorway. Um, I, I, you can see them doing more than fifty thousand a year. To be quite honest, right? Yeah, it's, if it's handy for coaches, I can see it because Dublin's a bit congested, you know. Yeah, but, that's uh, it. Um, People like to go to the artisan it. places, you know, like Pierce Lands or the, the, the old um, the big ones like Jameson's. Surely, more like do they not? Well, well, the thing about it is that the centre of Dublin, you know yourself, the centre of Dublin can be very congested tourist-wise. Um, they are easy. So having something that will pull a little bit of that away in a few years' time would probably be quite a good thing. Uh, bring a bit more uh, industry to that area. <clears throat> As I say, there's not much info on what they're going to be doing. But in terms of production, if there's if that's the size of it, you, you know, you're talking, I don't know, probably half a million, a million LPA, something like that. But um, yeah, I, th I think it, it's where is it, where it's at. It's a nice area to have it in because it's handy to get to just off the motorway and just out of the city centre. So uh, Jim's saying there, Whiskey Novice is saying fifty thousand is a bit conservative. I think so, thousand people a week. Um, but if that's what they're budgeting for or, or planning for, obviously, if they do better than that, they're they're hitting their targets massively, then aren't they? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, yeah, it'd be nice. It's a nice, it's a nice, handy way up towards the airport. You know, um, actually, uh, SQ knows the area really well. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a bit further out. It's about fifteen miles further north. Is it? Is it near Tito Park? Is that getting up near Tito Park? No, it, it's in it's in Balbriggan. It's not fifteen miles out. I don't think so. Right. Um, okay, I don't think so. I think, I think it's handy enough. Yeah, okay, maybe so. Maybe so. Looks like a greenfield site to me, but there you go. Anyway, we'll find out more in due course. It's going to be a business park as well, but I don't know, 150 people, employees, um, and so on. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Now, Irish Whiskey Exports this week, it was actually put out last week. Irish Whiskey Association have said that exports from Irish Whiskey have surpassed. 
the one billion euro mark, first time ever, which is is pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, but the IWSR, which is uh, they, they they do um, statements and documents about um, seals and alcohol seals and so on, and this is to do with America, which let's be honest, is a, a key market. It's probably the one that people at the minute really want to get to, and they've released um, their seals headline that was put about all of this is that tequila seals in the US have surpassed whiskey. Now, they still are chasing vodka. Vodka is still the biggest um, whiskey spirit seal, in, or, uh, spirit seal in the US. But total whiskey seals are up 3%. Bourbon is up 8%. Now, tequila... Is, as I say, is now second, and it's worth $1.6 billion a year and growing. Uh, they expect it, tequila to overtake vodka this year, which will make it the biggest spirit category in, in America. Um, uh, does this follow on pretty... from gin being down here? Is this sort of thing, uh, gin's down here, uh, white spirits are up the, over there sort of thing? I don't, I, I don't think that, that gin uh, has never clicked in the States to any great degree. You go down to places over here, you don't really see it. And you see lots of the, um, it's funny because you see a lot of the, the, the whiskey being pushed, a lot of the brown spirits. There's every bit as much tequila. And there's lots of brands and lots of big brands and lots of expensive aged tequilas, you, you know, your Añejo and all this kind of stuff. Um, so there's obviously a big push in that too, and it, and it seems to be clicking. But... <clears throat> You have to remember, bourbon's up eight percent, and whiskey's still up three percent. It's just not growing as quick as as tequila. But the line that was in this document that really sort of twigged it for me um, was: it says, "And traditional spirits are expected to overtake beer as the share of servings under the of servings leader for the first time in modern history uh, this year." This means. On a drink by drink basis, more Americans will drink traditional spirits. Now that's quite interesting. That the first serving, the, the servings that people will be drinking at home will be spirits, not beer. That's what they're saying. That's what and that's a big game changer. You know, you think of America, you think people uh, sit down watching a Budweiser, football, pull yeah. out a Budweiser, you know. Chips or crisps, let's be probably or something, you know, like and, and having a beer. Yeah, yeah. But that seems to be changing. People are now sitting down and having a spirit and and drinking an awful lot more spirits, which I think is is there's that people are changing where they're not drinking as much, but they're drinking more premium stuff, and that's being reflected more and more. Um, that's that's a very strange thing. Yeah, um, that's mad, says the whiskey novice. Yeah. That's mad. Yeah, that is mad. You know, it, it's, it, but it's, even on a cultural level, that's a game changer. The people now are confident enough that they can sit down and drink uh, spirits while at home, you know, and feel comfortable doing it. I mean, hopefully, hopefully they're not doing, they're not abusing it and drinking far too much. But it just is. Uh, almost a cultural change for me. And the fact that tequila is doing a lot more, sorry, probably reflects uh, more of a demographic and that Hispanics are going to be drinking that. But that's, I know that's a vague generalization, but it's probably uh, based on the truth. Uh, so yeah, that sort of cultural change, changing taste, changing norm is, is exciting. And when you think the headline is tequila overtakes whiskey, but once you actually look in below it, it's that's that's not what really the headline should be. The headline should be that spirits are overtaking beer. Um, yeah, and that, that's a game changer. Here's a way to do it do it with your mixer. A good one says, Hi, anyone tried teething ginger beer? Cast just opened a bottle last weekend, he loves it. Teething <laughs> <laughs> of about 4,000 different varieties of stuff, right? Um, teething, I, I, I like. Some tealing, I don't like some others. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's a good one. A uh, hey, good one. Yeah, I um, like that. It's good this, this here's tasty enough, I have to say. It's not all, um, <clears throat> Show the bottle up close, Marty. 
You see it? Yeah, and it's spelt oh. whiskey with an E-Y there, you know? Yeah. Oh, it's in the States. That's, that's actually tasty enough. So, anyway. <clears throat> Next up. Strikes all around. Now, uh, oh, not the whiskey industry, true. Not the whiskey industry. No way. Uh, <laughs> the IGO, the biggest drinks company in the world, uh, have, have being affected by a strike at its bottling plant in Leven in Scotland. Um, the union tonight has accused the corporation of cutting some workers' pay, st people starting work, engineers particularly starting work, by cutting their pay by 6%. Now, let's just think about this for a second. Diageo's profits were £4.4 billion, pounds, okay? So about €5 billion, Euro, $5 billion uh, profit. So that's up 18.2%. Inflation's running at 10%. And the as you are cutting people's wages. Good on them. That's a bit, that's a bit cheeky, Marty. That is a it's, bit cheeky. It's, it's just more than a bit cheeky. Um, I, I think it's repugnant uh, at a time when, <laughs> when people are under pressure financially. And let's be honest, the as you are spending money hand over fist. I mean, what they've spent on the whole Johnny Walker experience, on all upgrading all the Johnny Walker stuff, they've plenty of money. Now, United have pointed out that their profits equate to £157,000 per employee. That's what, that's what they're getting, the profit of each employee. Um, I, I think, uh, as you, you really need to have a look at this. Uh, catch yourselves all, you know. Is, is this primarily at a, a certain factory, the Johnny Walker factory? Is it? Yes, that affects. No, it's it's the Azul's bottling plant at Leaven. Now, the, the Azul said, "Do not panic, whiskey drinkers of the world. Um, we have contingency plans and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> You're taking on new employees, and you've cut what their wages are going to be real time, on top of the inflation that that's coming in. So that that." I mean, in terms of PR, this is bloody awful for the Azure, to be honest. I think it's, uh, and they deserve it. They deserve it. Mm, it's not good. Not good. Definitely not good at all. No, I don't think so. Um, so, anyway, moving with the times, Justin, I have become, I, I, I thought, what is going to happen to the whiskey world now that artificial intelligence is coming on board? All the rage, all the chat, artificial intelligence. So I decided to hit up, uh, uh, I hit on an idea, right? <clears throat> I keep seeing people doing artificially intelligent drawn art. Now I, I, I'm crap at art. I can't draw. I couldn't. I couldn't draw water from a well, right? Uh, so what I did was I thought of the concept. I'll get artificial intelligence to design a whiskey bottle for me. Okay, design a whiskey bottle for me. So I went to one of the the, the, the many. There's quite a few now, and I put in design us a, a whiskey Hold bottle, on. Irish whiskey bottle. Hold on, you must have been replaced like the Stepford Waves. There's no way you went on the internet and went to the computer and did this. Did I do I it? Did. Are you pretending? And I did no. it. I did it. I did it. And I asked, right, design a whiskey bottle. Now, in my head, I'm thinking artificial intelligence, the Terminator. That's, they're coming for us. Now, I decided... <laughs> <laughs> I decided that I would call my whiskey... I would call my whiskey Dunluce. Uh, because there used to be a whiskey brand called Dunluce, and as far as I'm aware, there probably is. There probably is one that's been recreated, and out, or somebody has registered it. So I called it Dunluce, and I put in a whiskey bottle with Dunluce, and that's what it came up with. That's fantastic, Marty. Now, I'm going to... They haven't spilt whiskey, right? They haven't spilt Dunluce, right? Um, and they haven't really done... So I don't think... We have much to worry about just yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, I decided that I would change it. I would do, instead of just entry-level 40% whiskey, I would do premium. 
because that's the data says that's where it's going. Okay. Yeah. And right. what it came up with was exactly the same. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's, it didn't change at all. Uh, so, uh, in terms uh, of AI, they uh, haven't really they uh, haven't really done anything uh, to do anything. Uh, Maybe done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen worse. Aye, I've, I've seen worse. Uh, you've seen worse. Oh, very good, very good. Yeah, very good. Very right. good. I've seen worse. We, did, yeah. we, went on to, yes. we went on to another arty page. <laughs> did, did Ralphie <laughs> do the spelling? Oh, very good. Very good. These are cruel bastards. These oh, are cruel bastards. That's, that's terrible. That's terrible. Now, um, we went on. We thought we'll get them to design the bottle. We'll get them to design the bottle. Okay, so I went to another arty page and I got up the bottle. And the first bottle came up, and that's what that suggested. Okay, now, yeah. So one was the label, the other one's the bottle. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I thought, right, we'll just do a whiskey bottle. Then I thought, we'll do an Irish whiskey bottle, I think it was. So what was the next one? Well, that's quite nice with the with the, the, the sort of Bross Brothers top, right? Okay. So we oh, did right. an Irish oh, whiskey oh. bottle. Oh, and it's just <laughs> normal. It's normal stopper top on that one. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. okay. Y you'd have paid. You'd have paid a hundred thousand pounds for that for the Chinese to do that for you. Uh, probably. Who knows? Then the, oh, they'd have done run it through the artificial intelligence. So the next one I did, I changed that a little bit, and we brought up the next one. Oh, Irish whiskey right. right. for Dunless whiskey. Now, oh, it's embossed. It's, it's it's melted and embossed. That's pretty classy. Yeah. That's pretty but classy. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what they've done. Where they've got done loose and decided to put like a, I don't know, like a, a sort of impressionist background on it. I'm not really sure what's happened there. And then the last one I put, uh, I changed it a little bit, and this is what it came up with: for Dunluce whiskey with label <laughs> and of itself. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so here, that's better than your mark, Charlie. That's better than your mark. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah. let's let's just say uh, I don't think we have much to worry about from AI just yet. Okay. Uh, this was I literally just pissed about at this for about twenty minutes, and uh, I'm sure somebody will come on and say, "Oh, if you do this and type in this and such and such, it'll come up. With, it'll do that." <laughs> That's not what you want from artificial intelligence. It's supposed to be smart enough that it knows what you're looking for. Uh, and you should be able to fucking spell whiskey. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So yeah. so, yeah. Anyway. I think to do that so as you can't steal a label and actually get it made, you have to do it yourself. Yeah. 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 Very good. Well, very good. I'm sure there's probably, if you pay premium or something, you get a better service. But I thought it was a bit of a laugh. Everybody's talking about this AI. And I went to a lecture uh, a few years ago before COVID uh, with a, the guy who lectures in. Um, Artificial intelligence at Queens, a guy called Doctor Barry Devereux, and he he it was fabulous. I mean, fabulous later, and he talked about how um, there's lots of problems, lots of things we really really need to be worried about from AI. Whiskey designing labels ain't one of them. Okay, no, we're all no, right. No. We're safe. Uh, the Terminator's not coming for us just yet. Now, last but not least, I saw this this week, and uh, this is from Goa. Um, <laughs> this is from Goa and this guy's stuck in a traffic jam in, in Goa and in there and he just decides now he's not driving so I'll just, I'll just put the caveat on this and uh, he just decides ah uh, bollocks and he just uh, climbed on the window so let you see I'll let you see, I'll let you see the, uh, the the video with this it's quite funny okay a video of a man calmly drinking alcohol while sitting on the roof of a car amid a traffic jam in Gurugram, Haryana, is going viral on social media. The elated video was shared on Twitter on Saturday by a user named Ravi Hunter. This can only happen in Gurgaon, he wrote in the caption of the post. In the 15-second clip, an unidentified man is allegedly seen consuming liquor on top of his car amidst the traffic on road. A person in the passenger seat is also seen passing an empty glass to the one sitting on the vehicle's roof. Just think you're stuck in a traffic jam. Boy's driving the car, you just go, ah, bollocks. Just came on the roof and have a drink to myself. Here, listen. Uh, Frank's saying it must have been AI cannot get, taste the whiskey and get his inspiration. And Jorath, very, 
very aptly said it must have been a slow week in El Paso. Listen, he was he was living it up at a five star resort with the Hiawatha and his crowd. Yeah, I was up with the Mescalero Apaches for a few days. Um, I went to the best place ever. I went to a place called Lincoln, which is for the, for the Lincoln County Wars. Anyone who knows about westerns and Billy the Kid, uh, if, if, if that's where it all sort of happened. I was on the 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 courthouse where he escaped and stuff. And uh, where he, he, he got out of his chains and shot the, the, the two uh, deputies. And that ah, was absolutely brilliant. Um, ah, it was class, absolutely class. So, yeah, I've been busy all week. I've really, well, busy. I've, I've had a nice, nice week to myself, you know. Um, yeah. So, what's Michael saying? He said, Michael sent videos like that. I'm sure there's an a, a, a artificial intelligent podcast somewhere where they're silly laughing at us and going, I don't think humans will be in charge much longer. I'm not 100% sure they've ever been in charge to start, but I was down here. I was here last week. Uh, I was telling you, Justin, before we had the show, I saw Air Force One, the United States, the president of the US's uh, 747. I flew into El Paso here last week. Uh, I went down to see it and see if I could see President Biden and him taking off. Not a lot of big Biden fans about this part of the world, if I'm totally honest. No, it's, it's a bit Republican around here. Anyway, so, watching on the TV, lands on. Now, all these politicians are always talking about the environmental issues, that Biden's doing a huge big push on electric vehicles and stuff, and uh, electric power and all this renewable power. He flew in in uh, Air Force One, his 747. Half an hour later, his wife flies in on her personal 747. So two jets flying in for two people, <laughs> essentially. Yeah, but they'll come on and tell you all about how they're going to save the environment, save the world and stuff. It's like, um, hang on. But no, she, she flew in in a 747 to herself uh, half an hour after he arrived. <laughs> it was really ridiculous. Uh, the whole place all closed down. Motorcade it was nuts, nuts. But it was cool, it was cool to see. Cool to see. Man, so it was. So, yeah. certainly, certainly seems it. Now, we get a bit of a yarn with our Carlos, who we haven't seen for ages. Here he comes. I can hear him rumbling away in the background. Do, 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 do. You're in the room, card. Hello. I'm here. How's it going? I'm here. How are we, son? How are we? Good. Christmas. Good. Burst them with uh, all your shelves behind you um, <laughs> all packed up. So, Absolutely. What's the whiskey companion noticed and what has been going on? Oh, yeah, there's... There's been a lot going on, isn't there? Um, mm. I know you've you've been on to me, <laughs> you know, with a couple of things that you've noticed, and uh, yeah, I mean, I have a couple of things that I wanted to talk about today, and uh, I'm sure you want to talk about them too. So. Yeah, well, well, overall, I mean, the, the, the secondary market's just getting more and more, more and more uh, important. It really is. Um, as, as everything just sort of keeps going, do, 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 do. more bottle sales, more volume going through it, and so on and so forth. Um, I mean, Whiskey Auctioneer announced they, they put 50 million through their, their auction house, one auction house, which is incredible, incredible. Crazy, about yeah. it. I mean, from what was essentially hardly a market at all um, mm. 10 years ago, there, was, there would have been no market really. And now, now you see what, what the, the people are doing. So what have you been noticing? What have you um, pulled up? Yeah, so the first thing I wanted to talk about um, was the first releases from distilleries. <laughs> so, you know, as you uh, well know, that the longer we go with these updates, the more uh, first releases will come on board. Um you know, a lot, a lot of distilleries were started up in, you know, 2015, 2016, 17, yeah. and beyond. So they're they're coming of age, and and um, the distilleries are looking to to get their their product out there, and you know, it's, uh, help the people who supported them at the start, and and show them what they've been been working towards. Yeah. So these are the ones that I kind of um, came up came up with in terms of looking at. Um, so we have Ballykeef, you have Connacht, the first cask, you have Baron, uh, Killones, Baron Tool, you have Shawcross, um, the Shed Distillery, and Waterford's uh, the Pilgrimage. So <clears throat> it's an interesting one because 
like looking at the the retail price um of a lot of them so the rrp um mm -hmm. you can tell that there's a bit of a mixed bag so <clears throat> obviously body Keefe came out with their car strength set with a waterford crystal um glasses and you really, know they came out and said this was the collector's edition really yeah. nice really nicely well really really that. nice <clears throat> yeah yeah and i mean like i i, I got the uh the 46 percent version myself which mm -hmm. rb that uh, 195 and i have to say like the box itself like the interior like even the interior of the boxes is extremely high quality um, yeah. and so i can only imagine the the car strength set set but looking at the two of them you know yeah. from the outside you know you're looking bottles released 986 of the 46 percent bottles released to the car strength then 350 so instantly the fact that they came out and said it's a collector's edition and it's priced mm -hmm. as such you would like the, the you know the, the person who maybe is a collector might come along and say okay that's the one to invest in and it's cast rent it's un, uh, unadulterated whiskey yeah blah, blah blah and you look at the price difference then the 46 percent is actually averaging higher than the cast rent set it's bizarre. That's in the last three months, one. you it's, know, it's a bizarre one. Why specifically, guys? Is that so bizarre when it's it's the market drives the prices? I, I, who knows? <laughs> it's a good question. Um, yeah. The reason that I find it bizarre is the fact that that it's a cast strength bottle, and generally speaking, people prefer cast strength, um, especially mm -hmm. if they would drink it so maybe, maybe that contributes to it that people bought it to drink but who's buying a 475 euro three four-year-old whiskey and um, uh, to drink I mean, probably I mean, not I, a lot of people i i, I like um and that, that's the one thing i would try and collect this sort of um number ones you know the first releases mm -hmm. uh and I, ha I have a bottle of the cask strength that i picked up and I kind of thought to myself, you know, that's a nice one to have. And that's not one that I was going to drink. It's one that I was going to keep. And I thought the presentation was really, really nice. I think Bally Keith probably suffer from nobody knows anything about them. And that's yeah. probably uh, what, what they suffer from. They, they they don't tell anybody anything about themselves. They don't advertise that much. They, they, I mean, it's, it's not one that's, that generates a lot of discussion or chat. Which is yeah. it's a bit of a shame because their their actual whiskey is not bad at all, you know. Yeah, like they they have their um their general release, and I think it came <laughs> out at like what was it sixty five or eighty euro or something like that. Yeah, and, it's a reasonable uh, like price. It's, yeah, it's a reasonable price, and it's reasonably like it's quite a nice whiskey to drink. Um, and uh, but so I mean, yeah, they also was... they have a nice story, you know. It's a it's mm. a fill the glass to try to be as sustainable and they can, uh, environmentally friendly as they can be. It's just nobody knows anything about them, which is a shame. Shame. Yeah, no, totally, totally agree. So that was kind of the first thing that kind of caught my eye. Um, you know, even going back historically, um, the the cast strength sets when they've come up for auction have just mm -hmm. not they've not performed. They've never yeah. gone above um retail. So I thought that was an interesting one. Yeah. Um, It'd be interesting to see where that goes in the future, you know. Yeah, because, yeah, big time. Yeah. It's one of those ones that probably if people are wanting to take a little punt on something that might appreciate and value over a period of time. It might be one. Might it might be one. If they, you know, if they if they stay the course, I don't like maybe putting the the, the hex on anything. But mm. you know, if uh, if they disappear, which I hope doesn't happen, then it becomes real collectible. But if they stay Absolutely. on, you know, if they have legs and longevity, it probably becomes even more collectible. You know, so it's probably one that might might be worth picking up. Yeah. No, absolutely. And then moving on from that, then we have uh, Connex first cask. So that came out in uh, May 21. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was it was pushed back and pushed back and pushed back um, because of uh, logistic reasons, I suppose. So I think they were only actually shipped the start of 2022. Um, yeah. So they had 800 bottles released, um, 150 euro was all pre-sold um, via their mailing list. Um, and it's it's sold out fairly fairly quickly. I remember 
Christmas mm-hmm. 2020. I think I bought mine. Um, so that was that was nice. And again, you know, I, I think they kind of did it. I wouldn't say they did it. They did it the right way, and you know, it's it's the way to do it. But it's coming in at you know 150 euro is yeah. there's a premium there, but it's not you know it's not unaffordable. A premium. <laughs> it's it's not unaffordable exactly. That's that's the right word, uh, right right uh, yeah. way of putting it. Um, they had eight hundred bottles. So again, I don't know how they got eight hundred bottles out at one cask. Call them at the first cask, but you know that's for another story. Um, <laughs> then <laughs> it was yeah. eight five years, which they came out and said it is five years old. Um, so you know you have an age statement, and then um, people seem to respond to it. You know it it. Um, it did quite well in in auction, kind of the first while that it was out, and yeah. then it's it's kind of settled. Um, and now you know it's it, it's it's sat at um two hundred and thirty now, um, mm-hmm. average over the last three months. So it's yeah. it, it's a reasonable um price for it, even if you were going to be drinking it or or saving yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a nice one, and for the people who bought at one hundred and fifty euro, obviously they're they're getting a return on the investment if that's what they choose to do well the, the thing the thing about it is um there's not many options in in connaught whiskey <laughs> you know <laughs> you know of the four provinces of ulster there's a, there's a, a distinct lack of stuff coming from the west of ireland um it's so not mm-hmm. that, that that's even in that regard it's a nice it's a nice thing to have you know because yeah if you've sort of whiskey from all four four corners of ireland you know there's uh, in the West, you haven't a huge amount of options just at the moment, you know. So, exactly. Um, I, I, I think Connors are really nice, really nice whiskey. It's really nice. Um, they have a nice sort of feel about them as much mm. as anything else, which is yeah. I like their story as well, and yeah. You know, I mean, they are a fairly large operation as well, so you'd think that they'd have the the legs to keep going, um, and perhaps become you know a, a mammoth down the yeah. line, um. Obviously, it's with the talks of the sale, and I think there's a there was a talk of the sale and stuff. I'm but, sure that you hear all these rumors. I heard, yeah, <laughs> I, I heard a rumor not that long ago that there's a few distilleries that are up for sale. Um, mm. One in particular, which may have been mentioned already in this article, shall we say? I heard a rumor um, that it was up for sale. I don't know. Um, I don't have Justin's money. Uh, <laughs> If, if I had, I would be more interested. There, by the way, there was a guy here, a guy in the States last night, won lottery ticket. One lottery ticket. He won this Texas State lottery. Do you know how much he won? $1.35 billion. Jesus. <laughs> crazy. Aye. Uh, wow. I, I think Justin, Justin won it. Everybody <laughs> does it. <clears throat> I wish I wish I had won that kind of money. I'd be uh, up there with the Russian oligarchs. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, no, no, but Connor's Con- 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 uh, 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 probably one that they'll be sticking about, and I, I could I could see that one progressively going Ste- up. Steadily going. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, not, it's, never, it's never going to be worth millions and millions of pounds, but it's, it's probably probably a nice one if you to, to keep to hang on to. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And then one that. You know, could potentially be worth millions and millions of pounds. Yeah. Um, the Cologne Baron Tool, uh, cast yeah. number one. So yes. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. First, um, I'll give the rundown of just kind of what what it is for people who don't know. But it's um, cast strength, sixty point seven percent ABV, three year old whiskey, uh, released in October, two hundred and thirty two bottles total, completely ballot, uh, balloted um, system, so it was completely random and. Um, it was 160 euros to buy. Yeah. Um, let's be honest. Uh, and Cologne, 50, sorry, and it's 50, 50 uh, 500 mil. Well, uh, Cologne make an awful lot of big waves for such a small place. Um, I, mm. Everybody knows I, I love the whole thing. I love the story. I love the people. I uh, love the produce. Love the whole thing. Still not totally convinced as to why there's a, 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 a sort of plastic wristband around it. I think it's maybe just to keep it in the box. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I have mine here. Um, where is it? Pull it up, Justin. Here we go. I have to find it now. That's the problem when you have so much whiskey, you can't find it. Like uh, 
That's about. It must be about there. Some. This is like spot drunk. the ball. This is like spot the ball. <laughs> Hopefully, having a home some night drunk and drunk it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here it is. Uh, Yo. No, I. I, I hope Brendan's I hope Brendan's not watching. He'll. Uh, he'll kill me for having a hidden. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like yeah. it's it's the help. So it doesn't like I know that's that's coming out with it. Hi. But, um, no, it's in, t- in terms of one weird. to keep, one to keep. Yeah, I think that's an absolute no brainer. Bit of a no brainer. I have to say the packaging they they hit it absolutely. I reckon he got that well. bottle designed by a- AI. <laughs> 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 it looks very similar to your one. <laughs> <laughs> just go to die on us. Just go to die live on stage like Tommy Cooper. No, Cologne, Cologne, that, uh, that's one that uh, it's a no brainer. That's a collectible. That's one Absolutely. that people will, in a few years' time, people will go daft to, to get their hands on that. Um, it, 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 it's likely to be the Spring Bank of Ireland, I'd say, in I, terms of collectability. I think so. I, I, I've, I've said I've said this lots of times, but I think um, going forward, Dunville's Dunville's when they bring out their own stuff will kind of be like the McAllen. It'll be I mean utterly utterly collectible, and Cologne is kind of like Springbank. And thankfully they're all up north for us. Come on, boys! <laughs> <laughs> but no, as I say that. You just see these trends happen, and um, I'm so happy that, that, that Jonathan's watching here tonight that that Dundell's brought out their um, standalone. Uh, Brandon is watching tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is watching uh, I'll, I'll be called from the cult now. I will. <laughs> oh, uh, no, but the, uh, the, the the fact that they brought out the, the the new PX standalone part of their range, not the single cask stuff, and I was pleased about that because it gives people who can't get their hands on. It's, it makes it accessible for people to actually have and get and drink, which is uh, really what it should be. But I think, I, I love everything that Dunville's do. I just like, the whiskey's amazing, the bottle the design and so on and so forth. Um, but Brendan, that, that as a collectible is going to be a classic for people to collect. Um, mm. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, just to kind of round it out then. So like, like at the moment, there, there was only, I think it was three sold uh, total. And uh, it averaged out at five hundred and thirty-five euro. Um, and put like us in a few years' time, people will be saying that's an absolute bargain. Um, yep. Let's be honest. Easily. Uh, yeah. Next up. Next up was short cross. So um, I, I I noticed here that I actually sent um, the wrong picture. So this doesn't have the uh, the details that I need on it. Um, other than that, it. Um, was released in February, 658 bottles, and it retailed at 350. It is sold at auction, um, not in the last three months, but it's sold in September for mm-hmm. 290, um, in August for 206, and August again for 301. So that averages out at about 290 uh, or uh, 285 uh, for those two months. Yeah. So again, another one that came in under retail yeah it's a bit of a strange one short cross um in terms of it being an historic whiskey i think david has said this publicly that it's a historic whiskey it's the first new distillery up in the north for for, for well over a century um and i think he's just right uh in some regards because you look people look at the secondary market and they see people buying them cheap and selling them expensive and david say well no, I, we be it, we do it both, and you can still pick this up uh, on the website. They haven't, they haven't sold out. You can still buy them at retail. Um, it's a beautiful whiskey. It's a wonderful drinking whiskey. Um, I'm probably one that I, I, I have one, and I think it's a, it's 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 a bit of a it's a bit of a strange one because it's quite expensive. But it's a first release, and I, I think first releases should be expensive. I think it should be, you know, this is your setting your, your setting your flag, but it's too expensive for the flippers, so it didn't sell out. If they'd have brought it out at a hundred pound, it'd have sold out in an hour. And um, so, I, I take my hat off to him 
and sticking to his guns. Um, but I think it's probably one that's worth having as a collectible going forward. Um, mm-hmm. I, th- I think people, at some point, it'll sell out and then suddenly it'll start to creep up. Um, yeah, and you see, I, I think you, so. You see it being worth worth having the, your hands on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, do- they're doing great stuff. In, in they are doing great stuff and they're doing experimental yeah. stuff. And what they did with the gin, you know, mm. before, we've all heard the gin markets dropping down. As, I mean, it's it was it was inevitable that it was going to, um, and and whiskey and obviously now tequila in the states and so on and so forth. But people have now found that drinking spirits is quite acceptable. It's quite mm. a trendy thing. It's quite, um, it's, it it almost seems as if you know you. See, People seem a bit classier drinking a spirit rather than drinking beer, you know. I think that's that cultural sure. change I was talking about. So you have this um, going forward. And I, th- I think Short Cross were doing really, really nice things with their whiskey and uh, doing what they've done with the, with the gin. So, yeah, be interesting. It's be a nice one to watch that. A really nice one to watch over the, the next few years. Definitely. There's Rush Bishop was saying he cannot collect whiskey. It needs to be drunk. <laughs> there you go. You just need to buy more stuff. That's the problem. <laughs> uh, and I, I, be like me and have a problem with, with buying whiskey and not, not know, a problem I, with drinking. I, I tell you what, I, I I might take another trip, take a two-hour drive to go up to, to mm. the place that I bought this to get another bottle of this before I go home because that is, I mean, lovely. I'm absolutely 80 dollars to buy. Cheap as Crazy. Everything. Yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. Right, what's next? So next, um, going to the other end of the scale. So this is um, Drum Shambos from the Shed Distillery, their inaugural release. So it came out in 2019, mm-hmm. um, so it's one of the older first releases. Um, but it only kind of sold out, I think, in like in shops in the last maybe year um, or so. Yeah. Um, 12,000 bottles released and... It was retailed at 80, 80 euro. Um, so kind of, you know, you look at Bally Keefe, you look at Shawcross, the RRP very high. Um, the average is then below retail. And then you have the Shed, 80 euro release and still below the, <laughs> below retail. Um, in, I guess, in, terms of, in terms of collectability, they quite obviously weren't, Gearing it up for the the, the, the the guys to collect and say it on the show. I mean, they released it was twelve thousand. You said twelve thousand bottles. 12, 000, yeah. You know, there's that's. I mean, that's that's a huge amount to put out as your first release. And absolutely, again, totally the, a different way of doing it, but good on them. You know, um, it's it'd be it, it's a nice way of doing it too. You know, everybody can everybody who wants everybody can uh, get it and drink it. Yeah. Everybody can get it. Um, so yeah, I like that too. You know, I, I know there's all these different ways of doing it, and none of them's right or wrong. You know, so yeah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, interesting, yeah. interesting. Too. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the the shed distillery again, like Shorecross are doing some interesting things. Like they have mm-hmm. the um, the vodka, and um, yeah, I, I I like their uh, their logo as well. Um, yeah. And I, I, I like, like the, the I like, I like the wee bottle. I think the bottle's quite cute. And yeah, I like the nice, way nice. I like the way it was presented as well. The bottle with the sort of square box frame around it. Because like, yeah. it looked like it looked like a painting, you know. <laughs> I yeah. think that's probably the idea. It looked like <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was really well done. Really well done. You know? And then moving on to the last one that I picked out, which um is Waterford. So it was the, the pilgrimage, first cuvee that they brought out. Um, not the first bottle that they brought out, strangely enough. Um, <laughs> so, so they had they brought this out in April 2020, 50% ABV, um, as is most of their releases. Um, the bottle releases was 1500, so it was a thousand, um, for consumers and 500 for the people who made it, mm-hmm. and it retailed at 150 euro. Um, so yeah, this this was kind of at the start of when first releases kind of caught the eye of everyone. Mm-hmm. And this one just exploded. <laughs> so good. straight away it was it was getting a thousand, you know, fifteen hundred sometimes in auctions because people couldn't get it. 
they have a huge audience uh, worldwide and they just seem to to really connect with their with their base and as waterford has grown and they've brought out um more and more whiskey and so some would say they flooded the market and with, with their with their single farm origins they, they brought out to too that. many whiskies and like you can pick up a lot of single farm origins that are you know half price from yeah. the retail and the the one that's really kind of kept its head above the water is um first cuba and i say i say head above water when it's pulling in like 400 times uh 400 percent of its rp um, <laughs> yeah averaging 780 euro or 765 euro it says there but that includes a zero because uh i think it, um it was a zero on something that it didn't sell so one of the auction sites it didn't sell mm. so because i had reserve yeah. on it yeah exactly yeah <clears throat> um, again, Waterford. Uh, I think the the collectible Waterfords will be worth having because uh, mm-hmm. let's be honest, the bottles look superb. Um, that yeah. that blue sort of old medicine-y bottle look to them, and the the cuvee mm-hmm. label. You know the actual the the, the standalone cuvee label Don is mm-hmm. fa- fabulous looking thing. You know it stands out an absolute mile. You know there's a wide range of prices there. Oh, there absolutely, absolutely, um, and so. there, there's more and more and more uh, distilleries going to be coming online. And having having the first release bottles is, is I I think it, for me it's a really nice collectible. Uh, it'd be a nice to have that collection of the first releases of all the distilleries of Ireland would be a really really nice collection. Um, so yeah, it, it's but they're going to be coming thick and fast in the next few years. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, I'll be I'll be keeping an eye on this. We might bring it up at you know a, a later stage when we have a few more coming out. I know I've omitted uh, two relatively new ones, so Dirt Brain. Um, yeah, of course, it, yeah, that was just released over Christmas, and yeah, um, it has. I think like, there's it hasn't five five hundred of those. I think they brought. Out. Was it five hundred or a thousand boxes? I think yeah, I think it was five hundred boxes of the. I think it was five hundred. The four different. Ones. So that hasn't um, made its way to auction yet. And then, what was the other one that I admitted? I can't remember. I'll come back to uh, me. I might die. T- t- I can't remember either. But I, I, I know um, Peter's Dirt Green stuff. Uh, I did a review. If you want to see the review I did of them on, on YouTube, the, the 1915 one's just fabulous. It's absolutely yeah. terrific. <laughs> it's... It, uh, yeah, they're just absolutely gorgeous stuff. They're just every time I think about it, it makes me smile, which is uh, tells its own tale. So, what else have you got for us, Clark? What else have you got for us? So, what else have I got for you? Um, so, next on the list was the red breast. Um, so, we have two two different things. So, I, I, I'm I'm aware of the time, so I won't uh, spend too long on the next two of these. Um, but first was the dream casks. Now, the reason that I picked this. Uh, for for those watching, is Marty was on to me and he was saying that the dream cask had dropped um, considerably. So we had a look um, to see what the story was. So there's there's two pictures here. So the first one is um, the three month average, and the second one is the six month average. Um, I know it's a little bit hard to read, so I'll I'll just kind of uh, read it out. So the uh, the, the PX twenty um, came in on the three month average at 752 euro the 28 came in at 886 the 29 at 926 the 30 at 1133 and the 32 at 3213 so marty what do you think six months was it higher or lower uh, uh, i'm going to go with a little bit lower a little bit lower okay so the six month average for the 20 was 713 and 28 was 841 29 9 30 30 was 11 13 and the 32 was 28 40 so considerably lower so the Ooh. difference between the three month and six month average in the last three months it's gone up um every every bottle has gone up except for the 29 um by at least five percent so the 20 or sorry the the 20 was five percent the 28 was five percent increase as well 
the uh, 28 or 29 was zero percent. So, you know, it was, it was 926 versus 930. It wasn't, it wasn't a mm -hmm. big difference. The 30 was a 2% change and the 32 was the largest and that was a 12% change Yeah, uh, in the last three months. Yeah. In saying that. <laughs> okay. In terms of the retail price, the, the the highest earner is obviously the 32. Next would be the, the 20, at 115% above um, retail price. The next would be the 28 at 111%, and then followed by the 30 at 106, and the 29 is performing the worst at the moment at 70% yeah. above retail. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's only seventy eight percent above That's retail it. That's price. It. Yeah, yeah, you're really making really, really doubling your money on them. Justin, what are you doing here? We're, 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 we're I'm flicking, I'm flicking between the two, but it's very hard to read the small writing unless you have a fifty inch TV at home and you're watching it. Yeah, no, I need, I need to find a better way of uh, displaying all these no. models. <laughs> so. I mean, the thirty two, obviously the, the the very first one that was released. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it That's a, just keeps creep, creeping up. Yeah. Um, and you think, projection-wise, in a few years' time, will you will you pick one up for ten grand? Yeah, I'm, I mean, like right now, it's sitting at five hundred and forty-three percent above yeah. what you paid for a retail. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that if that touches yeah. the ten grand mark. It's a thirty-two-year-old yeah. whiskey. Um, Redbreast, huge brand. And I, I, I personally think in five years' time, ten thousand pound a bottle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, like, the, they're they are getting drunk. Like Paul, well, it, from that's it. Belfast I, Whiskey Week is it, he? He's opened what three in the last two yeah. two years? Yeah, and, and, and there's been more. I, I know of other people who have opened bottles of them. Um, so yeah, good, good on them. Uh, but if anybody's wanting to, if anybody's wanting to purchase one to drink, now's the time to do it because in a few years' time, you'll they'll be nobody drinking them. Nobody. You, you you won't dare. You won't dare because the wet the wife will the wife will hit you with a rolling <laughs> pen if you do. <laughs> or you'll be, husband. You'll be sick in five or, years instead. Or, or, or husband, husband finds out about it, Justin. Oh, your husband. <laughs> yes. <yeah, it's laughs> so the empty bottle could get stuck somewhere. It'll take a surgeon about five hours to get out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> uh, and, and then the next one that uh, Marty was asking me about was the Red Bar single casks. Mm. Um, so again, it, like I don't know if you want to kind of open with what you were thinking yourself. And well, there, think... like, there's, there's 24 bottles, so I mean, I'm not going to go through every single one. Of them, no, but I'll pick but, out the ones that have, have changed considerably. That, that, that's still the dream cast, Justin. You're in the wrong. You're in the wrong one. Hello. The, no, the thing is, the, apologies the to everyone's was... eyes because this is just going to be a big list. Uh, the, 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 no, no, is no, that it there? Yeah, it's that one. There. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very, very, very small. That one, yeah. very small. There's some of those red breasts are really, really going daft. In other words, <clears> they're <throat> just sort of sat in the bite. They're not really doing a huge amount, and it's kind of hard to know. It's kind of hard to actually. If you, if you, if someone wanted to get the collection of that, it's kind of hard to get the full list. Um, yeah. Of just oh, who has I have the, the, I have the list what? there on on the whiskey companion. Yeah. And, um, so if you want to find a full list of, on the whiskey companion, um, but yeah, I, th I think again, it's a bit like the Dreamcast. There's, there's mm. uh, as having them as a collection is probably what you want to do. But again, it's very large. So how do you display it? You know, how do you put thirty odd bottles up? And unless you've got a, a mansion like Justin lives in, you know, like Carrickfergus Castle or something, you know, uh, you know, so it's it becomes a bit hard for people. People are going to have to pick what collections they're going to have. And I think Dunville's probably suffered a little bit from this when they brought out their single cask stuff because they brought out so many so quick that people were like, "Fuck, I get it. it's costing me three hundred euro a month here." Yeah. But over time, that'll become a really nice collection to have and one that people really want to have. But, mm -hmm. And I think Redbreast has obviously a bigger international following than, than Dunville's probably, than Dunville's have, let's be honest. Um, so you just have this, some bottles are going to be really collectible, other bottles will not be, but over time, um, that'll be a, a, a very, very desirable collection to have. 
probably more so probably more so than the Middletons, if I'm honest. Because Middletons will just price themselves a little bit too far that people just say, Well, I can't have the whole I can't display a whole collection of Middleton, so I'll sell my Middleton and buy Redbreast. And that's that's where I think it'll be, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, I mean, um, one thing that happened in the last month was there was a 20 bottle collection of Redbreast single cast that was sold. Mm -hmm. And the final price on that was just over 12,000 euro. And the highest possible combined price that you could have bought every single one bar, um, bar the Celtic Whiskey Shop 2002. And um, the friend of hand, nineteen ninety one, three four one three cask, would be twelve thousand eight hundred. Um, that's the highest possible price. Like if you if you had been unlucky and got the had to have paid the high price on every single yeah. auction for the last three months, the lowest combined price was ten thousand um, eight hundred. So average eleven thousand five hundred. So it it was above the average in terms of. Um, that 20 bot bottle collection mm -hmm. considering it didn't have four bottles yeah um, but the combined retail price of all 24 bottles is 8500 euro yeah so that was four grand 150 uh, percent um, yeah that's that's nice that's nice you know um yeah that, that, that'll that be a really nice collection to have the red breasts are yeah nice and nice and i think in terms of having a set collection, it's it's a really nice one. Now, one thing I did notice the the Middleton two thousand and nine mm -hmm. has dropped considerably in price. Yeah, yeah, it's it's one of those ones where you wouldn't be surprised if it just bounced back next month. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, it's a four thousand pound, four thousand euro bottle normally, and I think mm -hmm. the last time it sold it was dipped down. It was as low as was it three two three. Three three, um, you know. So it's always hard to gauge these things because you know because you have the the people who can afford to pay that kind of money mm. probably have it, um, exactly. and, the and the people who are saving up for it um, are, are they, the people who are selling it. Are they getting rid of their collection? Mm -hmm. Or do they just have standalone bottles? So it's kind of, it's really hard to know because I I think a lot of the Middleton's very overpriced, if I'm totally honest. Um as a collection, most people will never get anywhere near a full collection of it. Mm -hmm. So my the way I would look at it is why bother? You might as well you might as well have a collection of something else. And to be honest, red breasts are much better whiskey. Dunville's is a much better whiskey than that one. Mm. If, if I'm on it. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think anybody would really argue with me on that. Um, so yeah, um, I think I think Middletons are a little bit overpriced. If I'm honest, yeah. Well, Writer's Tears, Writer's Tears collections of absolute no brainer. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. absolute no brainer. The, the, the single cast cast rent, it's limited and it's uh, been saying it for years. Yearly now. release, yeah. yearly release, absolute no brainer that you have. Um, but all yeah. The boxes. Fix all the boxes. So what else are we going on? So then, what, are we, what else? Yeah, so, so finally is um, a little miniature. So a very little <laughs> bottle of whiskey for a very, very yeah. big price. <laughs> very, 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 very big, big price. This sold in so, Scotland. That's the one, Justin. Yeah. That is the one. Ah, there it is. There, there it so is. this was sold on Scotch Whiskey Auctions just last week. And it sold for £360 <laughs> for a 50 mil bottle yeah <laughs> 48, Road, 48 year old irish whiskey. 48 year old irish whiskey Cast um those caden head bottles that they brought out um there's a couple of tullamore jews that jones road one and whatnot and I, personally i think they are an absolute no-brainer if you have one of those hang on to it for grim death, because in a few years' time they are going to be absolute. You could probably buy a new car with it. One of these are worth when a miniature is going for three sixty, mm -hmm. and and let's be honest, it's 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 probably it's probably not at its full value at the minute. That 
Mm. That's the truth. So yeah. I would, I would personally would think you, if you have any of those Caden heads balls, hang on to them. Um, I was, ta- I was talking to a guy who has a, 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 f- a very extensive collection, and he has a, one of the Tullamore Jews, the forty-one-year-old Tullamore Jew, um, yeah. miniature, and he said, "I've never actually had one of the full bottles." Uh, I've, I've never even had the option of buy. I never even got the option of buying one because, for various reasons, um, and I've seen one of them for sale at the minute for six and a half thousand pound, uh, and they're, they're only going to go up. So if, yeah. if anybody who's anybody came heads who's any of the Irish ones of those, I just think hang on to them uh, unless, unless you need the money. Obviously, that's a separate thing. But the, that. I don't love to get my hands on that. I think that's a. Where you absolute, betting on it? I put a very small, I put, I put a very large, <laughs> I put a very large bed for me on it, uh, and uh, yeah. I, I got blew out of the water. Um, I, I, I couldn't justify three sixty plus fees. I mean, plus fees. I mean, I mean, what are you talking? You're talking the best part of four hundred and fifty quid. The time yeah, takes so shipping in, and insurance. In euros, <laughs> the buyer would have paid four hundred and sixty odd euro. Aye. And the, the seller would have got 480. Aye. Aye. So you're, t- you're talking 500 euro for a miniature. So That's if you had a full bottle, if you had a full <laughs> bottle, good label, nice fill level, what's that worth? Yeah. Best part That's of crazy. 10 grand. <laughs> and, and the thing is, a Jones Road bottle has never, like a full bottle has never come up. Rock. No. The miniatures have come up. So there was one, there was two in February 2021. One sold on whiskeyauction.com, you know, the, the German site. Mm-hmm. Sold for 340 euro. And then one in Irish whiskey auctions for 255 euro. Yeah. That's it. If you can get your hands on those, get your hands on them because they're, they're, I mean, if you think even the casks of those, the age of them and the cask strength, I mean, the only way that could ever have happened is that people just left them. You know, mm-hmm. they, even if they even open them up, they're going to drop percentages. And the casks, yeah. I mean, I, Aye. So those Caden Head um, collection, the uh, Irish whiskey, Irish whiskey collections, anything over forty year, anything over forty year old Irish whiskey is worth. That's uh, that's at the minute. Pff, it, it's, a couple of grand minimum, like you know. minimum, absolutely yeah. minimum. So anyway, yeah, uh, Justin, did you buy that ball? Did you buy? <laughs> was no, that like no, Christmas no, present for Marty? Was it? <laughs> No, no. See, I would need just as money to buy that. But anyway, no. so a nice round up, my old son. Um, yeah, absolutely. Nice thing to nice things to have. Uh, and it's nice that because the secondary market just becomes more and more uh, important. And, and mm-hmm. I know people always say, drink, 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 uh, drink your bottles. Yeah, drink some of them, but hang on to some of them, and keep them as collectibles because people like collectibles. It's like Star Wars toys. People should people should have. Uh, People should have been playing with their Star Wars toys when they were kids, but they didn't. And now, and now, now they can buy Ferraris. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I have a friend, I have a friend who collects Star Wars toys, and he keeps showing me stuff, and it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the? F- who is paying that for that? You know, a little Boba Fett figure with a key, because he's got a wee plastic cape that's worth like 25 grand. <laughs> Do you know there's an actual guy on the internet who uses those Star Wars toys to actually take pictures of them as toys, but they look like stills from the movies? No way. That's cool. And he has a massive YouTube following. Honestly, check yeah. him out on YouTube if you're watching tonight on YouTube. Hey, yeah. it's what. Hey. <laughs> You know, so he, he takes the toys and he puts off, lets off bangers behind them, and it looks like a bomb <laughs> exploded behind a stormtrooper. It's, it's it's far out stuff. The things you find on the internet when you're surfing. Put, put it like this, my, my, fr- my friend. He, he, uh, I said to him, "Well, there's a, a, a Star Trek whiskey out." I'm a, I'm a Star Wars fan. <laughs> I said, "I know, but it's, it's sort of the same thing." <laughs> Look of horror in his face. I thought it was like he's, you know, like uh, he's ready for fisty cuffs. You know, <laughs> it was dead funny, dead funny. Carl, the whiskey companion. If you haven't got the whiskey companion app, download it, and you can get all of this information for yourself. Download it and get onto the Patreon account and so on. 
download it, as I say, uh, you, you can get it, but having, having it coming from the horse's mouth is always a, a, a good thing. Carl, great to have you back, buddy, um, and we'll get to be back. Ca- catch up very shortly uh, for a proper, proper chat. Yes. Take care. Take, Take care. care. Have a good night, everyone. All right. Is that us? Are we going to sign That's us, my or? friend. We're we'll going to sign this. off. We're going to sign off and and uh, and uh, catch you again same time, same place next week. We're not hard to find. We're always in the same place. Saturday night, ten p.m. Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and Telegram. We're here. We're always here. You can check out past episodes if you want to find out more about a particular whiskey, and uh, you can also ask Alexa to play uh, Irish Whiskey Review or Google, and you will hear us there as well. Uh, I'll attempt to upload more stuff uh, as uh, I uh, get back into the swing of things. It's been a long, cold winter. Plenty to keep you entertained. Good night. (laughs) Good night.